If you're like me, you've probably gotten stuck with a fraction or two. And it could probably be even more embarrassing because you probably learned fractions a long time ago. So I get it. In this video, what I want to do is go over three tips that you need to know to make working with fractions easier. So no matter if you're in higher level math course and fractions are still tripping you up or you just never understood fractions, this video is going to help you better understand fractions and then apply them to no matter what problem or course you're currently in. Is that what you want? So tip number one is always write the fractions in the same form. So in this first example, you can see I have five plus two thirds. Now five is a whole number and two thirds is a fraction. So if I wanted to combine these, I got to get common denominators. I want to work with fractions, work with fractions. So what I'll do is I'll multiply a three over three on the left hand side to produce now a fraction that's a 15 thirds. Now I have a fraction plus a fraction. Now I can use the technique for adding fractions and add the numerators and keep the common denominator the same. Now in the second example, I have a mixed number divided by a fraction. When I want to apply operations, I want fractions with fractions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert my mixed number to an improper fraction by multiplying the denominator times the whole number and then adding the numerator. That's going to produce a 7 thirds. Dividing a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by a reciprocal. So when I do that, I get a 28 thirds. Now we can apply this tip also to fractions with common denominators, and but that's only going to apply when we want to add and subtract our fractions. This also can be used for decimals and percents. Whenever we have those three, I would always recommend and converting them into fractional form so you can apply your operations. Tip number two, always try to simplify first. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. You're not gonna have to worry about bigger numbers. Then you don't have to worry about simplifying at the very, very end. So how do we simplify a fraction? Well, there's a couple different ways you can actually think about how we simplify fraction before we apply their operation. In this first example, I have a 15 over 18 times a five over seven. Now, typically we would just multiply those straight across, but you might realize that's gonna be kind of big numbers. And if you didn't have a calculator or you didn't want to do some mental math, there could be some mistakes that would be made. So what we can do is if you look at the 15 over 18, those can both be divided by three. So if I divide the numerator and the divider by three, I'm going to produce an equivalent fraction of a five, six. It's going to have the same value. It's just in reduced form. Now I multiply that times five over seven, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and I get a 25 over 42. Now you always want to look to simplify at the end, but the nice thing about simplifying first is typically, not always, but a lot of times your answer is going going to be in simplified form. That's why it's always helpful to do it at the beginning so you don't have to worry about big numbers or simplify at the end. Now, a lot of times students will get stuck with simplifying fractions, especially if you can't simplify the numerator and the denominator of the same fraction. But there's still opportunities for us to simplify fraction, especially when we're dealing with multiplication of two fractions. In this example, I have three over 14 times a five over nine. Now the fraction three over 14 and five over nine cannot be simplified. However, the three and the nine in different fractions can be simplified. And I can do that because because my operation is multiplication and the values are again in the numerator and the denominator. So to simplify this fraction, I'm simply just going to divide the left hand numerator by three and the right hand denominator by three, which reduces my fraction to a one fourth times a five thirds. Now, when I multiply straight across, I get a five over 42, which again is going to be in its reduced form. Bonus tip. Now it's important to understand bonus tip that even when you're adding and subtracting fractions, you're still going to want to use this simplified process because it's just going to make the math easier. However, it doesn't really matter if if you do it at the beginning or at the end. So what I want to do is just kind of show you the difference if you were to simplify first or if you're simplified at the end when dealing with adding and subtracting. In this first example, I have a fraction of four over 16 plus a five over eight. Now it'd be very simple. We can just reduce the four over 16, right? Dividing a four in the numerator and denominator. And what that's going to do is that's going to produce a fraction of one fourth. And if I had to add that to five eighths, I would need to get a common denominator of eight. So I'd multiply the left hand fraction by two over two. And that's going to give me a two over eight plus five over eight, which is in its reduced form. Now, let's say you did not want to simplify at the beginning or you didn't even think about it. You immediately looked at these two fractions and you said, hey, rather than simplifying my 16, I can just multiply my right hand fraction to get a common denominator of 16. And that's understandable. A lot of students when adding and subtracting, that's the first way their brain goes to rather than simplifying. So if you multiply by two on the top and the bottom, you now have two fractions of four over 16 plus a 10 over 16, which when adding them together gives you a 14 over 16. Now, again, that's not in reduced form though. So then you would eventually have to divide by two and the numerator and the denominator, but you'll still get the same answer of a seven eighths. And tip number three is to eliminate the fractions. If you can eliminate your fractions, 
get rid of them. It's the simplest thing to do. Students all the time ask me, hey, I struggle with fractions. And I say, well, stop using them. Now, what do I mean? How are we going to actually stop using fractions? A lot of math problems have fractions. Well, here's what I mean. If you have the equation x plus five divided by three is equal to seven, you can see we have a fraction. Our expression x plus five is being all divided by three. That is not gonna be easy to work with. So I don't want the x plus five to be divided by three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo that. The way I'm gonna undo divided by three is I'm gonna multiply every expression by three. So when I multiply the left-hand side by three, as well as the right-hand side of the equal sign by three, I get an expression of X plus five is equal to 21. Basically, I'm undoing the fraction. I'm undoing the dividing by three. That is eliminating my fraction. So now I can solve the equation. In similar fashion, a lot of times when we have equations with fractions, let's say a different denominator, like three, four, and 12, what we wanna do is find the least common multiple. What we wanna do is find the least common denominator. That's gonna be the smallest number that you, all your denominators evenly divide into. So in this case, my least common denominator is 12. So if I multiply everything by 12, what that's going to do is that's going to eliminate my fraction because 3, 4, and 12 all divide into that value. Therefore, now I'm going to have an equation that is 4x plus 21 is equal to 1. Now I can solve that equation without dealing with fractions. Either way, guys, fractions can be tough. It takes a lot of practice for us to get familiar with fractions. I remember my mom asked me when I was in fifth grade, what is the one thing that I was struggling with math? And I said, fractions. Thinking that as a student that I would just go away, I definitely underestimated my mother as a math teacher. Because again, what did I work on for the rest of that summer? Fractions. She put me to work making sure that I'd be comfortable with fractions. Now, did it help? A little bit, but fractions are tough. It does take consistent practice. And so even though this video is designed to kind of give you a condensed version, you still want to make sure you are practicing and not avoiding fractions. Yes, get rid of them when you can, but don't run away from any problem that has fractions because they are a real number and very helpful in your math understanding. If you want to see more videos where I deal with fractions, go ahead and check out the playlist down below, or you can check out my other videos on fractions here. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.